In the previous video, we looked at the three essential flow parameters needed to describe a flow at a basic level. We also looked at a really important equation to link these parameters together. And finally, how that equation could be used to explain what was going on in a few different flows. Firstly, some examples in my flume, and then some examples in a real stream. As we move through these lessons, we're going to build on equations like this and look at many more mathematical frameworks needed to fully describe moving water. However, even the most well-established equations are only useful if applied in the correct way. In this video, we're going to learn about the main types of flow in hydraulics, because before we can apply any equation, we first need to know what type of flow we're dealing with and if the equations we are using are valid for that type of flow. The first way to differentiate flows is to identify if a flow is steady or unsteady. A steady flow is one where the main flow parameters do not change with time. If we think of a flow in a pipe, and we define a specific point in that pipe, the flow will have a discharge, a velocity, and an area at that point. If these three parameters are all constant with time, the flow is steady. If we started a stopwatch and measured the discharge, velocity, and area at this location, and as the stopwatch continued, these parameters did not change with time, this would be a steady flow. If any of these parameters were changing with time, this would be an unsteady flow. So an unsteady flow is one where any of the main flow parameters change with time. But rather than just relying on my drawings, we can see this more clearly by looking at an example in the flume. We can see in this example that the main flow parameters are not changing with time. As the stopwatch continues, we can clearly see that the depth and therefore the cross-sectional area are remaining constant. If the depth is stable with time for an open channel flow, this gives us a very good indication that the system is in equilibrium and therefore the discharge and velocity are also not changing with time. This is a steady flow because the main parameters are not changing with time. However, if I turn the supply pump off, this will now create unsteady flow, as the discharge, velocity and area will now change as time goes on. Here we can clearly see that the depth, and therefore the cross-sectional area, are dropping as time goes on, so this is now an unsteady flow. Under normal operating conditions, most systems tend to run with steady flow. Unsteady flow is most commonly temporary when we're changing a parameter in the system. For example, if we have a water supply pipe that is being fed by a pump at a constant discharge of 1 litre per second, this would be a steady flow, because as time goes on, the discharge is at a constant value of 1 litre per second. However, if we wanted to increase the discharge to 5 litres per second, the flow would temporarily be unsteady as the discharge increased, but would eventually become steady again once the system came back into equilibrium and settled at the new stable discharge of 5 litres per second. In my flu, it's actually very difficult to create long-term unsteady flow. If I turn the pump to maximum, the flow will temporarily be unsteady while the system fills, but eventually it will reach a steady equilibrium and the main flow parameters will again not change with time. If I turn the pump off, the flow is temporarily unsteady while the system empties, but eventually the flow will stop altogether. The only way to actually create long-term unsteady flow in my flume is to manually continuously change the pump settings. Because most systems are designed to run for the majority of the time under steady conditions, 
Most basic hydraulic equations are based on the assumption of steady flow. This is a useful assumption as steady state equations are far more straightforward than unsteady equations. It is also possible to use steady equations for flow that is only slightly unsteady. For this lesson series we're going to focus on steady flow and are only going to consider steady equations. We will talk a bit about unsteady flow but whenever we do calculations we will assume the flow we are looking at is steady. So to recap so far a flow is steady if all of the main parameters are constant with time, and unsteady if any of the parameters are changing with time. Once we have worked out if the flow is steady or unsteady, the next way we can categorise our flow is as uniform or non-uniform. Uniform flow is where all of the flow parameters are constant with distance along the length of the flow. So if we consider a pipe, and we consider two points along this pipe, the flow will have a discharge, a velocity and an area at these two points. If all of these main parameters are the same at point 1 and point 2, the flow is uniform along that length. Non-uniform flow is where any of the flow parameters are varying with distance along the length of the flow. An example of this would be a pipe where the diameter of the pipe increases. Consider this example and think about what would happen to the discharge, area and velocity between points 1 and 2. If the flow is steady, we know the discharge will be the same at all points in the system, but here we can clearly see that the area is not the same between the two points. It is now larger at point 2 than 1, and we know that if the discharge is constant but the area goes up, velocity must go down to conserve mass. So as the area increases at point 2, the velocity will decrease. Therefore, this would be an example of non-uniform flow, as some of the main flow parameters are not constant along the length of flow we are considering. The key distinction here is that for steady or unsteady flow, we're talking about how the flow parameters at a single point vary with time. Whereas for uniform or non-uniform flow, we're talking about how the parameters at a single instance in time are varying with distance. And if the flow is steady, the value of the main parameters at a single instance will be the value of the parameters at any time considered. Now let's consider some examples of uniform and non-uniform flow in the flume. In this example, we can see that the flow depth is the same at points 1 and 2. We can also see that this is a steady flow as the depths are not changing with time. So if discharge is constant and the depth and therefore the cross-sectional area are the same at points 1 and 2, we know that the velocity will also be the same at points 1 and 2. So this is clearly a uniform flow as all of the flow parameters are the same between the two points considered. This is actually a steady uniform flow. Non-uniform flow is when any of the main flow parameters change with distance along the flow. Probably the best example of this that we can create in the flume is something called a hydraulic jump. This is what happens when fast moving shallow flow, called supercritical flow, meets slow moving deep flow, called subcritical flow. At this point where the two types of flow meet, we get a sudden change in flow depth and therefore cross-sectional area. We'll actually dedicate a whole video to explaining hydraulic jumps later in the series, but for now we can just enjoy it as a great example of non-uniform flow. Here we can clearly see that the depth is not the same along the length of this flow, 
It is worth noting, however, that this is still a steady flow. Despite the fact that the depth is changing with distance along this flow, none of the depths are changing with time. Or, to state it slightly more precisely, none of the depths are changing significantly with time. If you pick on any particular point in this flow, you can see that the depth at that point is remaining relatively constant with time. So this is a steady, non-uniform flow. So a flow can be steady uniform, steady non-uniform, unsteady uniform, or unsteady non-uniform. Now, let's try to apply this theory to a real flow. Consider this river, which is the River Dusny, a few kilometres downstream from the Nankwanol stream that we looked at in the first video in this series. Just watch this river flowing for a few seconds, and consider if you think this is a steady or an unsteady flow. This is actually a bit of a trick question, because depending on how you are considering the system, this can be an example of both steady and unsteady flow. If we watch this river for just a few seconds, the flow parameters are clearly not changing much with time. And if it wasn't raining, and we watched the river for 5 minutes or 10 minutes, or even possibly an hour or 2 hours, we wouldn't see any appreciable change in the flow parameters over that time. So over short periods of time, this could be considered a steady flow. But what about if we look at the flow parameters over a much longer period of time? We can actually do this, as in the UK, the majority of rivers have their discharge measured and logged at what we call gauging stations. And the National River Flow Archive website gives access to this data over the last few years. If we log on and find the nearest gauging station for the section of river we're looking at, we can see that the discharge is varying massively over time. So over long periods of time, this is clearly an example of unsteady flow. So this flow can be considered steady over short periods of time, but is unsteady over long periods of time. If I was doing some calculations on this river, and considering what was happening over a few hours, steady flow calculations would probably do just fine. However, if I was doing calculations over a year, I would need to consider it as an unsteady flow. Or, if I was doing short-term calculations right in the middle of a major storm event, then it would also need to be considered unsteady. Now let's consider the same river again. Do you think this is a uniform or a non-uniform flow? Again, this is also a question that can be answered both ways. For a natural stream, it is almost certain that no two cross-sections in the river will be exactly the same. If we were able to survey the cross-section at two points in this river, it's likely that the area will be slightly different between the two locations, and therefore, even if discharge is constant, the velocity will also be slightly different between these two points. If both area and velocity are different with distance along the flow, then this is a non-uniform flow. However, the variation in a channel like this that in reality is clearly relatively consistent in profile, is often small enough that their effect is negligible when considering bulk flow parameters. In reality, if we were to measure the cross-sectional area, velocity and discharge between two points in the river in this shot, the difference in the area and velocity between the two points over a short reach would probably be small enough to be within the error range of the instruments we were using to measure them. So for this example, the main flow parameters are probably close enough to be considered a steady, uniform flow. However, not all natural streams are like this one. If, as we did in the last two videos, we consider how this flow looks a few kilometres upstream in the mountains, we can see many examples of non-uniform flow where the area and velocity are varying with distance along the flow and are clearly significantly varying over even short reaches. 
All of these are examples of steady non-uniform flow. And for these examples, the variation in cross-sectional area and velocity would be sufficiently large that we cannot neglect them if we're doing calculations. So to summarize this video, when considering a flow, we need to know what the main flow parameters are doing with both time and distance. If the main flow parameters are not changing with time, the flow is steady. If they are changing with time, the flow is unsteady. Once we have worked out if the flow is steady or unsteady, we need to consider what the main parameters are doing with distance along the flow. If the main parameters are constant along the flow, the flow is uniform. If they are changing, the flow is non-uniform. In the next video, which is the final instalment of this first lesson, we're going to bring together all of the theory that we've learned in the last few videos to look at something called the principle of continuity.